Hello everyone and welcome back to the Unreal Engine C++ training series by yours truly, Pharaoh. Where today we're going to be extending our TRA class, or our, our, TO, our TRA project, uh, where we did a whole bunch of teleporting. And if you haven't seen that tutorial yet, then you can go ahead and click on it at the top right of the screen here. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be increasing the functionality and playability and kind of making this into a full on a full on game mechanic that has a little bit more functionality and runs a little bit smoother than our previous thing did. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate it for you real quick. I hit play and just like last time we spawn our projectiles by uh, by the left mouse button. They stay in place and they stay there forever. But when I right click, instead of just teleporting instantaneously, I've got a nice little, I guess it's like an animation, but it there's at least uh, some travel time in there. And at least I think it looks a little bit cleaner, a little bit smoother. And we were able to do this by looking into different by looking into different documentation and we were able to do that by looking into the documentation just like we did in our last tutorial which is at the top right of the corner here and we looked into the documentation and we're able to find some functions that were able to help us to increase the functionality basically of what we have and I'll show you right here so just like last time, our on fire class or our on fire function, I don't know why I keep wanting to say class, but we have our on fire function, tell you to this, and we're going to add tell you to this to the projectile array. And most of this code is still the same, but there's there's some key changes that we have here. First of all, instead of using the older set actor location and rotation we've got something more interesting, which is our move component two. And move component two comes from the UKismet system library. And you can easily find it if you go into blueprints and move component two. It's something that I was, I was messing around with blueprints and I actually found it in there. And um, it was in the Kismet system library. And I was like, oh, sweet. I know what the UKismet system library is uh, in C++, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that. And it actually turns out to be very interesting, and that's what actually allows us to be able to move our component or our character to that location without having to teleport it instantaneously. Now, if you prefer to move the character instantaneously, you can use the set location and rotation, or just set location. Uh, functions that we used in the la uh, that we used last time, but I'm going to use this because I think it, it may, I think it looks a little bit more polished and looks a lot better. Now, let's just walk through it real quick. The first argument that we pass in is the root component of our character. The root component. Let's see, is there a root component explicitly defined? It doesn't look like it, but I believe the root component in this situation is going to be our capsule. So the capsule is just the collision that the that the player uh, is set up to. If you go in back into the blueprint, you can see, okay, yep, the capsule component right here is the root component. And it's just the, the collision that we have set up for the character. So we're going to move that component. So if we move the root component, then we move everything else. So if we, per se, or if we, for example, moved just the gun, right, only the gun would move. Even though I'm not sure it would let you because the gun is a skeletal mesh, and it will only take a scene component uh, in, in this uh, argument right here, so you'd have to do a little bit something fancy to get that done. But we're going to move the root component so we can move the whole character. And then in the second... Uh, the second parameter that we're going to give it is the location, which is our projectile array uh, at index zero location, which is the exact same argument that we used in the previous tutorial. We've also got get control rotation, which is once again the second parameter that we used 
in that other uh, tutorial. And then we've got some, I think this is our sweeping, our movement in and out. So let's, I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this because I'm lazy. So you seen component, then our relative location, our rotation, yep, ease out and ease in. So these are gonna be, if you wanted, if you wanted these to, I don't know, have a smooth transition in and out of the movement, then you can go ahead and set you know those to true or false depending on what you what you like so do 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 then our next our next um, really important parameter that we're gonna pass in is how much time does it take to get from point A to point B now I have it set as a hard-coded value so no matter how far I am from the object it'll always take 0 0.07 seconds but you can have uh, set a, a, a maximum speed, if you will. So you can say that there's a speed and you have the distance. And if you were to divide those, you would be able to get a time out of that that you would then pass into that argument. So you've got the time and then bool b shortest for shortest rotation path. I have that set to false. I actually kind of want it to set to true. So if I want if I want the rotation to take the shortest possible path, then that's what I'll do. So if I'm going to be rotating from 180 degrees to 270 degrees, I want to be able to make that as fast as possible. I'm actually not sure what situation you wouldn't want that set to true, but hey, just telling you what's there and what why it's there. So then we have next our e move component action. It, this is a little messy. It just tells you that you want to actually move. And then we've got something called our latent info, which is a left an F latent action info. I just called it latent info. Basically what this does is it tells you exactly how it's going to move, I believe. So we need to be able to actually set this latent info callback target to the character itself or else this won't work. We, I still have to do a little bit more research about how the, late, the F latent action info actually works because I'm still not entirely 100% sure but after reading through some documentation and just experimenting with the, with the function here, it seems that this is the appropriate way to get this function to work. So that was that. Now we can move on to some other stuff. If we, if we keep scrolling down, keep scrolling down, all of this seems to be the same until we reach this Kismet lab, math library function. And this Kismet lab, math library function um, is max of float array. If you'll remember in the T-Array tutorial, I was saying, oh man, I can't believe there isn't a function that takes the maximum value of the array. And that's because it was hidden in the Kismet math library. So what that means is basically this function right here, index of max, we can delete, get rid of completely because we there's already a function built in for us. Now, I don't actually know if the if this is faster than index of max, um, but it but it's already built in there. It's already written in there, and it works perfectly well. So I'm going to use that, especially since I can pass it in the projectile dot values. I can pass it in a value that will it that it will then store the highest index at, and it'll also do something that we didn't do with our index of max function and that is store the value of the highest float which could be useful if you wanted to check um, let's say if the value is between a certain uh, threshold so if the value is greater than 0.9 or if the great value is greater than 0.95 then you'd go ahead and do that or if the value is zero for example then that would mean that you are looking perpendicular to where the 
so if I if I go right here, if I'm looking here, then the dot product will be zero. So you can say if the if the dot product is less than 0.1, then ignore the teleportation. You can do some do some really cool stuff like that using this highest float value. And then once again, we have our F latent action info. Same exact story here, except we're passing in the highest index instead of zero because we want the highest index to be teleported to. And then we're going to empty these arrays again, just like last time. But unlike last time, what we also are doing is we are making these, uh, these arrays U properties. Now, why would we make them U properties? Because U properties allow us to interface our, va our variables with the Unreal Engine's reflection system, what that means is that everything that's here has a potential to be monitored by that reflection system, right? But what that really means is that it'll help us to keep track of the memory that's in inside of those T arrays. So our array is holding our actors, especially this one, it's holding our actors, which are garbage collected U objects. So we should let the engine know that it should also be looking in here for these objects, right? And this will take care of any issues that we have uh, regarding memory management. So with this here, we don't need to worry about uh, what value the pointer is set to as much necessarily. We still want to be mindful of it, but with this we should be avoiding crashes more often than not. Just by adding this U property to the projectile array. And then I also had a question um, as to why I am including the, this forward declaration. Now some people have asked me, they say, Pharaoh, why, why do we need this uh, forward declaration? And that's because we're using an A tutorial projectile. What I didn't go over earlier is that we can also say that this is an A actor telly here and we can set this telly here to our world right here or to our, our spawned actor right here and it'll work just the same. The reason however that I chose to make it a tutorial projectile is that it just makes it easier for us to read and exactly know what it is partially because I have an, ambigu uh, an ambiguous uh, variable name, but that's besides the point. But why do I have this forward declaration here? Well, if I were to take it out and try to build the code, it, everything seems to work fine right now. But once it builds, you'll see that a tutorial projectile, we actually don't know what that is if we're just looking at the header file. So the header file has no idea what a tutorial projectile is. They think that it's a class, but it could also be a variable or any other number of things. So we've got 50, 51 errors and four warnings just from taking that forward declaration off. We could fix that by including our tutorial projectile dot h and if we go ahead and build now then we'll see that it actually works but the problem comes in where we might run in to a situation where we have uh, circular dependencies so there could be a situation where we have a function inside of the projectile that depends on the function inside of the character and vice versa. So in order to fix that, what we do is we, we just leave our function or, or we leave our include in the character or in, in the source file, omit it from the header file and put in this forward declaration. 
What it also does is it makes it everything it makes everything look nicer and cleaner because we already have tons and tons of include files in here and we only really need to include the bare minimum in our header file. All right, so it'll all build and come in and be nice and nice and fun and succeeding. Come back in and play and everything is hunky dory. All right, there we have it. If you guys like the content where we go ahead and actually make uh, game mechanics instead of uh, just building on the fundamentals of the engine or of the language, then you can go ahead and leave uh, some feedback in the comment section down below because I am thinking about making a, another series that runs tandem to this where we work on game mechanics and stuff like that. Um, so if you if you like that kind of stuff, then let me know in the comment section down below. If you have any questions, comments, and concerns for me, you can also leave those in the comment section down below. Or you can tweet them at me at notfromegypt. And that's not from Egypt because I'm not from there, actually. Even though my name is Pharaoh, people think that I'm from Egypt all the time. That's the, but that's besides the point. Um, Hopefully you will all have learned something from this tutorial, and if you haven't, then let me know, I guess. I will see you all on Mon uh, see you all on Friday. Today's Monday. You have a good one. Bye bye.